Hello and welcome to the Eugene Torto YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be about the uh, little LED lights that I'm going to put in the uh, door panels of my 90 Corvette. Uh, I already have LED lights in there and uh, when I was re-finishing uh, the uh, passenger door panel, I lost the one in, that goes in that side. Uh, I, re I replaced them with uh, white ones. I didn't like it, so I put some red ones in. So now I got a red one on the driver's side and a white one on the uh, passenger side. So I ordered some new ones. I got them from, if you're interested, superbrightleds.com. I'll put a link down in the description box. And uh, I also went and ordered a uh, amber light. And that's going to be for the light bulb that's down there by the uh that lights up the shifter console you know the uh, park neutral drives little plastic thing there and this looks way too big for that but that's what they sent me and that's supposed to fit so uh i'm not going to replace this today i'm going to do that in a separate video when i refinish the uh, center console but uh we'll get i'll show you what i'm going to be replacing and is, Anyone not familiar with my 90 Corvette, I'll post a link up there. And uh, anyway, as you can see, I have a red one there. And over there is a white one. So I'm going to replace both of them with red. And the reason I'm replacing both of them is they changed the style of bulbs. In other words, the uh, let me see if I can get it out here. If you look at this, this bulb, it's a different style. And this one this is the new ones that they have they discontinued this style and i don't know if they're going to be the same or not so i just ordered two of them and i'll replace both but it's a real simple procedure to change these out you should either disconnect your battery or pull the fuse for the uh the courtesy lights i believe it is for these uh one thing you have to do when you change these you have to make sure that they're polarity correct. LED D bulbs have to be polarity correct. If you put it in and it don't light, it means you got you to take it out and switch it around. So let's see if I can uh, do this and uh, hold the camera at the same time. If not, I'll have to put this, find some place to put this camera. But all you need is a screwdriver. I have this old screwdriver that I bent sort of like that. And that helps, helps a lot when we're removing electrical connectors. And all you got to do is pop it in there like that. Be real careful. This plastic's old. Like I said, you should remove the fuse and uh, and there's no way I'm going to get that bulb out single-handedly. So uh, let me see if I can find some place to put this down safely and securely without it falling on its ass. All right. Let's see. Yeah, that might hold. I guess we'll find out. Basically, you just pop that out like that. I'll get the other bulb, which I left on the counter. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to, before I put it in, I'm going to test it. Make sure it is the correct polarity. Okay, it lights that way. Let's see if it lights the other way. Yeah, it lights both ways. I guess maybe the new ones, you don't have to be polarity correct. So that's good to know. I'm going to just pop it in there. Like I said, you should really pull the fuses when you do this. And uh, I'm going to put it like that. I think that should do it. Let's see. Of course, getting it back in. Like I said, this plastic's 30 years old and I say they're about the same so whether it was worth it for me to change these types I don't know but let me go do the other one in fact I'm looking at this one this is a totally different style from that other one I showed you so what do I know but let me go get the other side and the other bulb okay we're on the other side hopefully this will come out as just as easy like i said just take the screwdriver yep there she goes I'll lay that in there and there that bright white one see if i can hold this between my knees yep i think i can look at that this one actually is hot i don't think about them getting hot but they have a little resistor in them so okay let's see 
there she goes, she lights. Pop it in. Pop it back in. I'm not happy about the way that's popping back in, but it might take a little push. There she goes, snap she goes. Hope you guys seen all that. And that was it, that's all it takes. Uh, see if you can see the one over there. See how that looks. Yeah, I like them. They look good. Now, uh, of course, they're going to shut off. Nope. Nope. Let's turn the lights off and see how they look. There they go. Yep, I like the way they look. Yeah, definitely. And uh, one other thing I did, I changed the LED bulbs under here. This one always flickers. And those I used white. And let's see. Turn that on. And uh, like I said, the bulb under here, I'm going to replace with that LED bulb when I redo these. And I also re replaced an LED bulb inside the mirror. I don't see if it'll light up without the key on or not. Yeah, well, that lights up, but there's another light. Let me get the key and the ignition, and I'll show you. I think that needs to be on, I guess. I don't know if I can find my keys. There they are. Okay. Like I said, yeah, as you can see here, or I hope you guys can see that, because I don't know how good this camera is in one light, but I like the red lights in here. And uh, I have to say I like that as red lights. It helps makes it a lot easier on your eyes at night. Now the lights in the uh, rear hatch, those are, I changed to LED a long time ago. That made a big difference. And uh, under the hood lights, I always leave them disconnected. In the future, I'm going to, uh, let me open up the hood. I don't have the lights hooked up right now, but they're easy enough to plug in. And those I replaced a long time ago with LED bulbs. Let me put this down somewhere. If I can find that without knocking the camera over. There it is. And eventually, And I'm only going to hook up, well, let me hook up the other side, too, and I'll turn the lights off. And that's a big improvement of having these LED bulbs in. Uh, one, they don't get as hot. And uh, another thing is uh, they don't use as much electricity. Uh, before, if I had the hood open with those lights on, the interior lights on, the hatch open and all that, this a good, really good brand new battery would probably last you about 30 minutes. Uh, with these LED bulbs, I actually went to a car show at night and left all the interior lights on and stuff, and the hood lights, and I was there for a couple of hours, probably a good, yeah, a good four hours, I think, maybe three or four hours, and it didn't affect the battery at all, so. All right, I hope you guys can see all that. And anyway, I'll show, I'll find out when I uh, go to edit the video. But uh, I hope that was helpful. I mean, there's other videos on there, people replacing these. And there's at least one video on replacing the hood light. They're real easy. Two screws, pop the bulb out, pop the new one in. Like I said, some of those LED bulbs are polarity sensitive. So if you pop it in and it doesn't work, don't freak out. Just swap it around. Now, uh... Back to uh, the Corvette in the shop. I don't know if you can see, but I changed all my lights in my garage to LED. Here's the old uh, fluorescent ones here. And uh, I actually stuck one of these fluorescent ones up in the loft into a switch so that when I go up in the loft, all I got to do is hit a switch and I have light up there, which is a big help. But... Now, I never changed my headlights to uh, 
Never changed my headlights to LED. A friend of mine actually offered me free ones, and I just don't like the LED headlights, the way they look. And I really don't drive that much at night. And I'm actually happy with these Sylvania ones. These are the top of the line Sylvania sealed beams. Uh, one thing about sealed beams is they're real glass. And I like real glass. I mean, it's bad if a rock hits it, it's going to break, but uh, so will plastic. Uh, and uh, they won't fade. They won't uh, fade and change color and all that. They're, I just like them better. I just like the way they look better. Uh, I'm old-fashioned that way. I know everybody likes the LED lights. Maybe in the future I'll change some more stuff to LED lights. I forgot where else I had an LED light. I think I might have an LED light on the uh, spare tire light down there. And I might have an LED light in the license plate light. Yeah, I do. And for the rest of the lights, I'll just leave them the way they are. Uh, if you do change your lights, like your, uh, your uh, side signal lights and all that stuff, uh, you will have to change your relay, I believe it is. Or you have to put a load resistor or something like that. So keep that in mind. Anyone changing LED lights probably already knows that, so but so it's helpful. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. I got a lot of projects I'm going to be doing. All sorts of projects. I got to change out that rear to posse shot in it and get two new tires. And this uh, air oil separator that I made, I'm not happy with it. I'm going to make a better one. And I don't know if I'm going to do a video, complete video of making that with my using my lathe and whatnot. Uh, I might just go ahead and purchase one. Uh, I've looked at ones that you purchase and the reviews are they're just a plain can with not much in them. Uh, you really want a lot of baffling in there in order to properly separate the air and oil because you don't want the oil, any oil mist going into your intake. That's the whole idea of the catch can. Makes your uh, combustion chamber run cleaner. And if anyone hasn't seen it and doesn't know what that is, I'll try and leave a link to it up there. And uh, that actually works really well. I have to say I'm happy with it. Uh, now, what else I can do? It's a bunch of projects. I'm going to be removing the fuel lines. And I think I'm going to replace those fuel lines. Those are from, not the whole way to the back to the tank, but from the fuel filter up to the uh, intake or the fuel reels on the intake. And uh, the reason I'm going to do that is uh, there's a rubber section in it about six inches long where it makes a bend and comes up, goes from the frame to the engine. And those are, as far as I know, they're original and they're 30 years old. I, I'm just lucky they haven't blown out. And uh, something to consider. So there is a company that makes them. Uh, they are a little bit expensive. You can get stainless steel or the plain steel ones. I'm going to get the stainless steel ones. And uh, should, I should probably replace all the way back. They're still all the way back that I reached the tank. And then those rubber lines that hooked to the tank are 30 years old. So that's the thing to consider. 30 years old. And uh, really the mileage doesn't matter with something like that. I mean, in fact, the more it's sitting, probably the worse it, it is. You know, if you have a low mileage one that sat a lot. Yeah, because that's just the way rubber is. If it doesn't, uh, seals and stuff, they don't get used. I'm not sure if it's the same with fuel lines, but you got fuel sitting in there, you know, for a long time, especially if it sits a lot. That's not a good thing. Uh, I guess that's about it for now, but uh, like I said, I got a bunch of other projects. Oh, one other project I'll be doing will be the parking brake cables. Those are shot on this. I always hang up. Whenever I use the parking brake, I always have to manually get under there and, and sometimes remove the wheel and, and push the, the lever back. Uh, because they're just so old and rut corroded. Uh, so I'll be doing that. I'll be doing the hood uh, latch cables. These work, but they're adjusted all the way out, which means they're at their limit and they could break, and you don't want that happening. Uh, if you ever do break your hood cables or your hood wound open, don't panic. There's several ways you can open this without having to cut a hole in the hood or remove side panels. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on that. And uh, a lot of people, they hook up a lanyard right here and they just run it right through here and just let it lay there as an emergency backup. And you can do that. They sell kits on the, uh, on the internet for that or you can just make your own. Uh, maybe I'll make a video about that. But uh, I guess that's about it for today. 
Um, it's a really nice day out for December. It's like uh, going to be like 50 degrees. It's sunny out. And that's a perfectly good excuse to take this Corvette out and go for a drive. So, like I said, I want to thank everybody that subscribed so far. I'm up over 200 subscribers. Uh, I mean, that's nothing for YouTube. And I, even though I have had my YouTube channel since, I think, 2011, I, used, I only started uploading videos on a regular basis as far as trying to get the, the channel monetized like a year ago. So I'm actually real happy. You know, I'm not like uh, a super sexy young lady or anything and a super personality. So I'm, I'm actually happy I got over 200, uh, 200 subscribers. And uh, the only th way I'm going to know what you want to see is if you leave comments below. So leave comments and I'll try and do them. I'll, you know, if I can. And remember, this stuff costs money, and that's the reason I want to get monetized to help pay for it. Uh, I'm not getting any younger, and uh, so the sooner I can get a thousand subscribers, the better. Once again, thanks for watching. Subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, and God bless.